the plunger is all the way down at the bottom, and that's how this plunger will be also when you actually open it up, okay? With this one being the top load, so it has this little raised area right here, and there's a little arrow, okay? Going back to this as well, so this little thing right here, this is a warmer. If you come and touch it, you're gonna feel that it's actually warm. <coughs> Contrast is thicker than water and thicker than blood. And so a lot of schools of thought believe, and, and, and we, we've done this for a long time, that when you warm the contrast, it makes it, it thins it up a little bit. And so your injections will be a little easier, possibly cause less reaction or when it goes into the body, especially when you're doing the coronaries. And so for many years, we've, we always kept our contrast in a warmer. Now, Jayco has come along and said, and so there's an expiration date on contrast. This is a bottle of water because we don't have a real contrast here. And I got these from the lab because they're just easier to work with. And then I just refilled them. Um, so this, but, the expiration date on this one, and I've had this for a while, is August 20th of 2022. So it has a pretty long expiration date. They say though, the studies have shown that once you put it in a warmer, that the expiration date only goes to a month, that it changes it. So a lot of places have actually gone away from keeping it in the warmer, which I don't think is good, honestly but because you'd have to date it and time it and then make sure that you rotate and it's just a little more work. But honestly, for injections, from my experience, I do believe warm contrast is better. But like I said, you're probably gonna get out there and see a lot of places are at, well, at least I know Riverside, both places at River, they're keeping it in their drug box these days as Memorial does the same thing and the drug box is locked and you have to put in the patient information and have, uh, you know, use your badge, uh, your fingerprint to be able to get any drugs out. And so it is considered a drug that we administer to the patient and they don't have warmers. So they're not being, it's not being warmed. But once you do load it in here and say a lot of times, so we're loading this as the process of getting your room ready. So you don't load it just right before you're going to do the injection. So it could sit in there 10, 15, 20 minutes, and it might actually warm it up a little bit. Okay. Now some of your older machines, some of the warmers don't work, but if you do have a place that has these newer ones, most likely the warmer does work. And you can feel, I'll let you guys feel it later. See, it's pretty warm. Um, <clears throat> I also want you to notice, and you'll all have to come up, up front to see this. This I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, but there are some, oh, I think they're ovals, yes. So some ovals, black with white outline, little ovals on the back of this. And you call this part the jacket. This is not disposable, this stays with the machine, okay? And so that's this hard piece. I mean, it will come out. Let's see if I can get it out. I'm not sure how, yep, you just pull it out, but that's the jacket. So that if it did get dirty, you could take it out and clean it. What do you clean it with? Water, Soap and water like clean, yeah, mm -hmm. nothing special. It does go on the end back. There's a little pin down in there that you have to put it back. The top loads are a little different. Um, without having one, it is kind of hard for me to explain, but you'll see it when you get out. What did they have at Memorial, Kia? Yeah. They have the new ones? Yes, but they never use it. Yeah, that's what you said. They don't use it very much. It actually, the Southside it, doesn't use it, but they have the old one. You can take that off, right? What? That part off. This um, can, can off. also, this head part can yes. just be mounted to the table. And then you would have this part on the wall. You wouldn't have this um, little monster 
to have to reel, when you have to move it, you'll see why I call it a little monster, <laughs> to have to wheel around. But this is a one that say, if you, if that was broken or went down, you know, and you couldn't get anybody in there to fix it, a lot of places do have a portable one that you could move from room to room if you needed to. I think they had the old screen though. They had that, but it was an older screen. Really? It wasn't touch. Hmm. It had three parameters, like you said, mm -hmm. that you changed. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, so those ovals are gonna be important in a little bit, all right? Right now they're ovals. They're gonna change when we put some fluid in here. Okay, so I wanna go back to when we get ready to, to get our syringe out to load it into the power injector. We're gonna open it, and we wanna make sure that we pull it out where we don't touch the straw on either one of those ends that I told you. We're just gonna leave the straw in there right now. We're going to look for our little raised spot here, and we're gonna get in front of it, and this, you know, it can move around, and we're gonna look for this arrow, and we're gonna just sit it down in here. Now, you can't push it where it's going to pop in or snap in, you just set it in there, make sure it goes all the way down. Then you're going, this little, I don't know what you call it, um, clamp or whatever, is going to, that's what's gonna secure it. You have to push up on it, pull it towards you, keep that pulled up, and just keep coming until it kind of pops into place and locks that syringe into place, okay? Now, the next thing we have to do, so before we can get any fluid in, what's it full of right now? Air. Air. So we have to get all that air out. So we have to purge the air out of the syringe, okay? We're gonna use these mechanical, so there are the little touch button controls. There is a hand control also, but right now we're gonna do this kind of fast. This is slower, but more fine adjustment to engage it. So this is a safety feature. You can't just push up or down without hitting it kind of in the belly button area. You hit it in the belly button, you get a green light, and then you're able to go forward. Down here it is slow. As we move up, it gets faster and faster. The plunger starts coming up, grabs a hold of that, um, what would you call that? I guess it's the plunger. This is called, it has a, special, uh, a specific name, but I can't remember what it is right now. Doesn't really matter. It's gonna grab a hold of the plunger, push it upwards. We wanna push it all the way up, expel all the air out of here, okay? Now, and, I, and you wanna do that fast. We're good to do that fast. Now we want to decide what contrast are we gonna use, okay? So whatever, kind of contrast, not worried about that right now, but what size bottle, depending on how many pictures we're gonna do with the power injector. So contrast comes in different size bottles. This is a 100 cc, this is a 50. Um, this is a 200 milliliter bottle here just depends on kind of whatever company and whatever the lab wants to have. If I'm only doing one angiogram that I need less than 50 cc's, I may only choose a 50 cc bottle to load in here. If I am doing an angiogram that I need more than 50 cc's or I'm doing multiple, I may choose a 100 cc bottle. This syringe will hold 150 cc's. So technically, I actually could put 150 in there if I was doing multiple injections. Once we get to the leg pictures, you actually do load 150 cc's in there. So did they do runoffs at Memorial? Mm, or you just I didn't, didn't get see, to see? Okay. I didn't get to see those. Okay. They do usually use anywhere from 120 to maybe 130 cc's of contrast when they look from here down to the toes. Okay? 
really doesn't matter at this moment. What I want you to more worry about is, oh, how do I load this contrast into the injector? Okay. So bottles are different in that this kind of bottle, you just unscrew the top and pull out, and this actually has way more. Let me just dump off some of this. And pull this little rubber stopper out. Both of these bottles, and this is a certain company that makes these bottles, okay? This kind of bottle, you actually have to pull this tab off, and then you can pull off that gray plunger to be able to get in there, okay? Now I will say, there are some labs that might actually hang, like this one has a big hole, I forgot, and it's leaking on me, it's just water, but may actually hang the 200 here for the manifold, which you're gonna be seeing next week. And they may actually draw out of this bottle like 50 cc's of contrast and put it in a sterile bowl from their tray. And the scrub tech actually might walk over or hold it wherever if it's mounted on the side of the table and hold it where the circulator, remember this is the circulator is doing all of this right now. Scrub tech can't touch it because none of that's sterile, okay? And so, but at this point, if say they did, they wanted to, because 200, they go ahead and pull 50 out, put it in their bowl, then they would just hold it, the straw would be on, and the circulator would push the buttons to draw the contrast out of the bowl. That is a way that can be done. Or if you're at a lab where they have the 50 bottles, the 100 bottles, then the circulator is just going to get the bottle, open it up, pull off the cap. Now this is important. This is one of those little details. <clears throat> when we take the cap off, remember we may be setting this up 10, 15 minutes ahead of time. We don't want to leave this exposed if we're trying to keep that tip sterile. So we want to be able to recap that. So I have to sit this cap down. I can't put it in my pocket because then I just contaminated that, which is going to then touch the tip when I put it back on and contaminate the tip. I can't put it down like that on a table while I'm trying to fill because then I just contaminated the cap. So I have to sit it upright. Okay, somewhere on some surface. If I have to, I could sit it, if I do have this kind, I could sit it right here. Whatever, I have to be conscious of what I'm doing, focus on what I'm doing, and keep that cap from getting contaminated. Now, if it falls on the ground, something happens, then a lot of times, some of us, I, I've done this in the past, I've actually gotten a syringe out of the sterile package, pulled off, and put it on, that one won't fit. I think a 10 might, but anyway, or open up a new package and get you a new cap, okay? But we're gonna try really hard not to contaminate this, okay? Now I'm gonna get my straw, and like I said, we need to make sure that we reach in, and this can flip. So you, even if you touched up here, it would be okay, but what if that flipped? It just touched me, I just contaminated that straw. They do make, they don't make the cap separate, but they do make straws separate. So if that did happen, we could get another straw, it's not the end of the world, but we wanna try not to have that happen. So you wanna try to reach down in where you can get a hold of it and not take the chance of contaminating this tip or this area of the straw. Then we're gonna come over and we're gonna put it on. Again, we can't touch the tip. So we just kind of try to, there's a little like nipple part and I actually am gonna take this off and show you. So underneath, it's almost kind of like a little, they would call it the male end. That's what we're actually attaching the straw to, okay? So, 
you want to you see how I'm keeping my fingers back I don't have my fingers way down here because what happens if my finger slips I just touched and contaminated if I'm back here doing this and I happen to slip off I have less chance of hitting the tip and contaminating it so again another very focus 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 on the detail of how you're doing this you don't have to jam it on there so hard that it's hard to get back off you just want to make sure that it's on there kind of secure so that when you go to draw in the fluid it stays on so now I'm gonna get my fluid that I've got ready my contrast and then I'm gonna go ahead and stick it down in here now I want to go ahead and start drawing it in. I have to re-engage because this turns off after just a couple seconds if you don't do something. So I'm gonna re-engage. Now I'm gonna show you what not to do first and then I'm gonna show you the right way to do it. So if you engage and then you start, I want you to look very closely at what happens when this fluid starts sucking in. Eh, and I waited too long. What is being created? A bunch of unnecessary bubbles. Like I told my 14 year old many, many years, he makes a lot of unnecessary noise. <laughs> I don't know why, and I, he still does it to this day. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> meh, meh, meh. I mean, why? 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 Why you gotta? I know. I know. I didn't grow up with brothers. So I didn't know about all this unnecessary noise, and my daughter didn't do it. Anyway, unnecessary bubbles. Okay. So what we want to do, like I said, when we were, and I'm gonna put it all back in. When we were expelling the air, it didn't matter. We were getting air out, so we could go fast. But when we're trying to suck in the air. Now we want to go a little slower. Now it doesn't mean you have to go um, turtle speed right here. This is gonna take you all day and they'll be like, what are you doing? It's gonna take you all day. And you're gonna see, a, speaking of guys with unnecessary noise, they don't pay attention to making unnecessary bubbles. So a lot of guys actually do it. I've seen a few females, but most are a little more conscious. And so really what you wanna do is to go about halfway and you can then actually kind of, because you can actually push and pull your hand down while you're still drawing in and make it go a little bit faster. And what do we see? No a lot less bubbles, hardly no bubbles. Now I do, and if you'll notice now, I've got my bottle tilted where my straw is. It's just like if you were trying to suck the last bit of drink out of your cup. You know, some, if you've got it straight like this, you may not be able to get what's on the bottom. So if you'll turn it to the side in this kind of position over here, then you can get almost all the contrast out, okay? So now, and I always like to pull in, I do like to pull in some extra air, okay, just to make sure. Now we do need to get that air. I also want you to notice over here. So what happened to my little syringe on my screen? It's full. It says it's full. It's green. Okay, that's going to be a problem later. I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But right now, that shows me, okay, I've got fluid in it. Now I want to get my air out. I like to keep my bottle here and my straw on because it will catch maybe any that's just sitting residually in here, okay? And remember, contrast is sticky. I don't wanna get it all over me. I don't wanna get it all over the machine. So when I go to expel the, the air, because that was another big thing, we can't have any air in this when we go to inject to the patient. So I'm gonna engage and I'm gonna go pretty slow. I'm gonna stop right about when I get to the bottom of this little clamp thing. And then I'm gonna use my hand and I'm gonna dial it up the rest of the way. I gotta look really close and I wanna actually take that fluid right to the bottom of that straw, okay? Now I can take my straw off.
take my cap and put back on. And now it's set and ready to go into the patient once we start the procedure and we need it. Okay, now I want you to look at these shape, this shape. What does this shape look like now? Come close. It's a circle. It's not an oval anymore. Okay, the fluid being in there has changed the shape. That's a safety. I don't know why or how, because if I was unsure, this is what I would do. Yeah, I see that there's fluid in there, okay? But, because honestly, if you do have it all the way up to the top, it could be hard to tell if there is fluid in there. But that is one of the safety features. This is fooling. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to show you why this is fooling in a few minutes once we take it out. So you don't want to just trust. Oh, I just unplugged it. Dang it. So you don't want to just trust that. In fact, it's going to reset because it turned off. And look now. That actually was a good thing that that happened because I'm full of fluid, but it's telling me I have no fluid in there. And unless I do this, pull it all the way back down, and then go back up. Which is still not gonna tell me the accurate amount. Because it thinks I'm just purging air out right now. Not until I drew down again, and it's not even going to tell me. So it's actually messed up if it does get powered off. I'm not going to be able to see what I've done there. Okay? But I could have a syringe full of air. Say I went up, and I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, well, how I said it can really be fooling. And so you never trust that. You always visualize your syringe. Say you came in and relieved somebody and you saw that the um, injector syringe is put in and you wanted to make sure that there's fluid in it. You always visual, put your eyes on this. They say that air has gotten injected into like a bolus of air because that didn't get done. I don't know how anybody could ever possibly do that. It's just, it, it's crazy to me, but they, they say it has happened. And of course that's gonna kill the patient. Okay. okay, so now I'm just getting it back ready. We are all set. We're going to be set and loaded. This is one of the things you do not want to happen as well. Can you give me a paper towel? So when you are loading it, you have to be super careful because you don't want contrast to come out like that. Because what happens is now it's down, it could get down in the syringe, and I'm gonna to try to wipe up. But when you go to connect, see how that dripped out? That is unsterile, that fluid is unsterile. And when we flip this over, we're gonna be on top of the blue drape connecting to a sterile tubing coming from the patient. So that's why that is so important that you're so careful when you are loading this. And I see people who aren't that careful and it really drives me crazy because then you, this is the cross-contamination that it talks about on the morning, okay? So I would rather just have a little bit, whoop, and you gotta be careful with that too, like after, because there's gonna be possible blood contamination after. So I'm actually just gonna pull it back down and then just try to clean it a little bit. You couldn't do that, obviously, if that has happened, because now then my tip's not sterile. I mean, if you have a bad contamination, you're just gonna have to get it out, throw it away, and start all over. Okay? I didn't know it was gonna rain like this this afternoon. We did the same thing yesterday. In fact, Like I can't. Yeah, me 
I just didn't bring it. I don't even have one. I swear to you. Okay, no message yet. Well, I'll practice getting canceled. Anyway, <coughs> so now we're all ready. Everything's done. We're ready for the procedure. So, what we're, how we're going to practice this is just that our bowl is going to be our inject, where we're going to inject it to. Once you choose calf in the spring, then we're going to actually practice with connecting it here. That's one thing we didn't get to because of COVID. But um, we're going to actually do the actual connections that we're truly going to do in the lab. But what we're going to do when it's time for the injection is we do have to remove the cap first, okay? Now, I don't care if it gets contaminated because it, I'm not gonna be using it after, okay? I'm going to tilt, and you'll see a change on here when you tilt down, which I'm hoping it's gonna let, even let me inject since it's saying I don't have any, it's not showing any fluid. We'll see what happens. I may have to redo the whole thing, okay? Once, also look at this. So there was nothing except for how much contrast we have in here, which is 83 milliliters. There was nothing down here until I flipped it. Once I flip it, it actually tells me what the program I have set for and the PSI, how much pressure it's gonna inject at. Okay, and so this would be the patient laying on the table. I would be the scrub tech and here would be the doctor. Okay. I would have my little tubing connected to the pigtail catheter. Can you go? Um, um, I, it doesn't really work what I want to show. We'll, we'll worry about this more later. Um, of course, this would be filled with fluid. And what you would do, yeah, you could just go do a little forward for me. So take the knob. And so when I would, I would be scrubbed in. You would, she would go forward, you would go forward. So we get fluid coming out, making sure there's no air there. Since this is sterile, I can touch the tip. There would be fluid filling this tubing. And so then I would make my connection. You're not gonna draw back, but normally the next thing, and I would have to be very careful not to touch any of that because I'm scrubbed in, I got my sterile gloves on, and. Then she would draw back and I would hit right here to make sure if there was any air in that connection. Anytime we do any kind of a connection, there's a chance that there's an air bubble, okay? So she would draw back, we would see blood come back from the patient, make sure there was no air bubbles. And then she might actually go forward just to fill my catheter with the contrast since we just draw blood out, okay? At that point, We're going to program so this will be the circulator over here programming and so i'm going to do a 20 for 40 or 20 for two ah, zero is what i'm trying to hit and i'm just going to do 400 psi so it doesn't come out of here and hope it doesn't come out of here watch out all right the next thing that i need to do is to arm it so right now no matter what I do, and this is how we do our injection, it won't inject. I, actually, I have to tell it to arm, okay? So I'm gonna hit arm single, and it asks me a question, or it tells me a warning first. Do not inject air. Have you expelled all air from the syringe disposable? And I'm gonna say yes, because I have. Now it's showing me, sorry. Uh, now it shows me the green that's in there. It also comes up and says single, armed single, and then disarm. The light also comes on on the head, and this is called the injector head, the whole thing, okay? Now I'm ready to do that injection, okay? The doctor has gotten the image intensifier, say this is for our arch shot, okay? so. The doctor, the tech, they put it in the LAO 40 degrees. We have the patient positioned. 
we're ready to go. Doctor tells the patient, okay, don't move, don't breathe. They step on the digital, the screen goes white. They may or may not say injecting to you or to inject. Some will tell you to inject, some will not. You kind of have to know. If they don't, if they're not one that tells you inject, you have to be watching the monitor and say, okay, the screen's gone white, now I need to start the injection. I always, for my own, cover my behind, say injecting, mm -hmm. and then I hit the button. That way, if for some reason they really didn't want me to inject, or maybe the patient moved and they wanna, they're about to step off and say, oh, no, let's re reset this, redo it, then I've said injecting before I actually hit the button, okay? When you hit the button, you have to hold the button down for the complete cycle. If you let off of the button, it stops the injection, okay? And you don't get the full injection. I actually hold it down longer, in fact, and you're gonna see what happens when we actually do the injection, okay? So doctor tells the patient, don't move, don't breathe. They step on the pedal for the DSA. The screen goes white. I say injecting. Push the button. You hear the beep, the light has gone off, then I release the button. Okay, now that injection is complete. If I wanted to do another injection and say I wanted to do the same program, then I would just hit arm again. Now it's not because we haven't tilted the head of this back up. If I do that, it is not gonna ask me about expelling the air this time because I've already told it that I did expel the air, okay? Now, we could have done, if we knew we were gonna do multiple injections at 20 for 40, we could have done arm multi. What that would allow is that you do the injection, which we don't have enough, but once I do the injection, you'll see what happens. It'll probably tell me I don't have enough to do another injection. If I had done that on the first one, and they do this sometimes in TAVR procedures, because they actually do take a lot while they're trying to get um, the valve in place. They do a lot of injections right there at the valve just to make sure, because once they place that valve, it's placed. So they have to be very, very precise. So a lot of times they will go ahead and fill the power injector with the 150 and then the people will do the arm multi just so they don't have to keep rearming it every time. If we're just doing aortogram or LV gram or the legs or abdomen, most of the time we're just going to use that arm single because we actually may have to reprogram. Maybe they want to do 24 2 here but down here they want to do 15 for two. So if you have to change your program, you cannot do arm multi. You have to do arm single, okay? So try to demonstrate what would happen with the arm multi, right? We've done everything and time to inject, injecting, push the button, let off, and it actually shut me down because I didn't have enough. It says procedure halt, low volume, actually right here. Now, as I said, what would have happened, it actually would have still been armed. The light would have still been on. It would have been ready to do another 20 for two if I wanted to with doing the arm multi. Okay, now, most of the time, you're not going to use all the contrast like I just used. There's going to be some contrast left in there, okay? But what's going to happen at this point is that when we are finished with our injections, then the scrub tech is going to come back and remove the tubing. Keep the tubing on their tray in this scenario. Now, there is another way it can be done non-sterile and that's what I'll teach you when you go cath okay we're not going to worry about that right now and we're actually not even going to do all this connection for the testing 
We are gonna, I'm gonna have you do the injections, but um, just so I know that you know how to do the arming and the injections, but then we're not gonna do all this connection for the test part. But when we get into advanced in the spring, then we'll work more on that, okay? So now we need to get it out of the way, out of the procedure field, and so as the circulator, you'll come back over at this point, I would have my gloves on before I, you know you could have had gloves on if you wanted but you really didn't have to because you know all of that stuff was clean but now there could be some blood so I would want to make sure that I had my gloves on and I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna get it out of the way okay now right at this moment I might not do anything if we're doing a procedure but when I'm finished with the procedure I have to get this syringe out, okay? Honestly, you really don't have to bring this plunger all the way down in the real world. Now with the bottom load, you do have to bring the plunger all the way down or you're not gonna ever get the syringe out because it. when I say bottom load, it actually goes up inside like this and to get it out, it comes out like this. You actually have this thing called a turret and you flip it and it houses the, the jacket. You put your syringe up and then you flip it back is the, how the old one works. But with this one, technically you don't have to, but this is what's gonna happen if you don't. So this is, again, I always like to show you what not to do and why, so that hopefully you'll understand why I'm telling you don't do this. So even though you don't technically have to bring this plunger all the way back down to get your syringe out. For our purposes, number one, I do need you to bring the plunger all the way back down or I can't get it to come back down and for us to reuse and I only have one of these syringes, okay? But this is the other reason why I still think even in the lab, you should get in the habit of going ahead and bringing the plunger down because you just see what happened. <laughs> That's contrast, it's sticky, and there could be some blood there. So you just spewed stuff everywhere, okay? So if you will disengage at least a little bit in the lab and then pull off, you're not gonna have that spurt out like that. Here though, I do want you to just go ahead and so if you, you're in that practice, even in the lab, they may tell you, oh, you don't have to take the whole thing out. You just say, okay, but I would still always bring it down just a little bit, or you don't have to bring the whole plunger down. But here, I need you to. We're gonna pull back the clamp. This is very, very important. So you don't take the syringe and try to yank it out. For one thing, you're gonna feel a lot of resistance not going to be easy but if you did and because what's happened is that silver piece there is a name for it and it's driving me crazy I can't think of what the name is it's the rod or whatever that silver rod that's in there is got a hold of that plunger still and if you did force this syringe out it's still got a hold of the black plunger you're gonna pull just the syringe that fluid that's still in there is gonna be in there and then it's gonna all go down into the injector and ruin this injector. Okay, so the good thing, like I said, I don't think you're gonna forget that because when you come over here, if you did try to pull it, I mean, I'm pulling pretty hard and I'm not getting any, re I'm getting a lot of resistance. So what you wanna do is you're facing it, you're gonna turn it to your left, a quarter turn and you actually feel it loosen. And that rod goes on back down automatically, and then you can just pull your syringe out. Okay? And here, because we have a little bit of fluid, I just have to get the fluid, and you just have to kind of do that for us to read, to practice. And that's it. So you can, you don't have to record